，我觉得长城就是一个小孩子看的一本一本童话书。当然还有很多，在那种寒冷冬天下那种那个人与人之间的友谊，呃，小朋友之间呢，亲人之间的那种，那种非常温暖的感觉。James, congratulations not only on winning Audience Award at Hot Docs, but getting a nomination as Canada's Oscar entry. My Thank goodness, you so that's much. amazing. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to meet you. And and what a tribute your film is to the、uh, to the protesters who. We haven't seen、mm -hmm. in many years.、Um, a tribute to what they did and what they, their bravery. It's just incredible. So,、uh, China immediately banned Da Zhong's book as soon as it was announced that it, the film got a nomination. Did that frighten you or him concerning people that you knew in China related to you? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, this is one of the things when you're making a film like this that you are always aware of through the process is that these people have already been through so much. You definitely don't want to subject anyone to any additional risks, and and so this is something that you ask and something that you explore. But、um, you know, the participants in the film were all adamant that they wanted to tell this story. I mean, they had been through so much already because they wanted to speak out, and so. They won. They wanted to. They were very adamant that they wanted to share their story. But also, something that was interesting to me is that they felt that the the spotlight, by and large, is something that actually can assist people in China. And so, what I mean by that, yes, in this case, there is the sort of、um, the book banning and and Dashong's reaction to it was, I don't want to say it was kind of a shrug of the of the of the shoulders, but he did. Um, experience other things already in this regard, so it wasn't a surprise for him. I think he's more, you know, he says really for me, he says the biggest impact here is the other people who've worked with me. So the publishers, all of these people who are affected, because he's, you know, he's part of a hundred books, right? That these things are they're teaching materials in universities on on how to on his illustration techniques and such. He's illustrated for number one kung fu novelist in China. Like he's he's been. He's, you know, sort of widely、um, involved in a lot of really,、um, you know, important work there. So he's less concerned about himself at this point because of what he's already experienced, and he's more just saying, "Hey, who they're really hurting here are other people around me." But you know, in terms of the overall situation,、um, it, it's something that was interesting to me because I faced a bit of blowback in the production of the film, and. And I took a bit of a lead from the others, from the survivors that I had met. And and what I mean by that is, we met Dashong when we were making a kung fu video game a number of years ago. That's how we started、yeah. to collaborate, and that's where we learned about his story. And that video game was being published by Tencent, which is a massive media company in China, one of the largest there, and and a big player in the gaming space. And so our game, just in the midst of its launch, was pulled from store shelves in 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 China, and essentially. Or from their storefront, and we were we were contacted when we finally reached Tencent. We were told that the、uh, the government had intervened and said that they had to cut ties. And we were asked if we were doing something not aligned with the Chinese government direction. And my wife's family members in China are also contacted by the Public Security Bureau and harassed. Oh no! So so you you get this sense like, and you're aware of that. You know that these you know you hear these stories like there's so much influence with with China in terms of entertainment, and we hear all about you know. How they've invested so much in Hollywood and stuff, and whether this is leading to some type of censorship or self-censorship of of other of content, and in, in terms of how China is represented on screen, and so people warn you, like, hey, you know, you shouldn't really touch that. But at the same time, you know, we built a relationship by collaborating with Dashong, and we we understood what he had gone through personally to be able to tell his story. And you see the survivors here that have come out, and they've gone through so much. In some cases, without giving away what's in the film, like there's people there. Who are no longer with us? Who were part of this event, right? And you see what people have sacrificed in order to be able to speak up in the face of injustice. And then you look at your own situation and you say, yes, this might be inconvenient from that perspective. But if we don't speak up, then where are we at? And and how are we really using the freedoms and the and all of that that we have, right? If we're essentially just、um, not touching certain sensitive subjects、oh, no. because we no, we no. don't want、yeah. to upset that. So so that was part of it. And then you know I would meet. You'd meet survivors like、um, there was an individual I interviewed for another film I was working on at the same time, a sort of related project, 
um, and who had been, you know, tortured in prison and, and, and all of a sudden his conditions improved and he didn't know why. And he learned that, um, you know, his name had been mentioned in a, in a newspaper report in Australia and he had appeared in a human rights uh, document and people were calling the labor camp saying, hey, I know what you're doing. And so even though those guards in the labor camps and prisons may not be facing consequences internally for, for torture and other things that might in fact be encouraged to, to meet out these abuses. At the same time, when they know that there are people externally who are watching them, it does help. And so because of this, um, you know, people I was meeting, they, they felt that their best recourse was to be able to shine a light on what was happening. And, uh, and so uh, I've kind of taken a lead from that as well. This is, this is what they want to do. And I feel that, you know, the, the spotlight is probably the best that we can do at this point is to shine a light. And, and if anything, it can hopefully help others who are still facing these circumstances in China. When I was 所以我觉得, well, you know, the Oscars uh, have always been a political platform from sashing Little Feather. And I sincerely hope that this gets a lot of attention, shines that light even more. Um, it's just a situation that can't be born in this, in this reality. And I love that, that, that uh, you know, you've, you've, used mixed media to make the film actually De Jong's work his art mm -hmm. his animation along with mm -hmm. the, the live footage of interviews um it's quite unusual very remarkable and I wonder if that will sort of set it apart from the others that might be up in the categories well you know thank you for that I mean I've seen a number of documentaries that I really enjoyed over the years that used animation. It has been used at times. I, I loved Walt with Bashir a number of years ago. I saw Tower and got a brief chance to meet the filmmakers when they were at, at and Flea, Flea I loved, but Flea yeah. I saw after I had finished my work on this film because it's more recent. <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of, you know, nose to the grindstone finishing this thing and then people were like, you got to check this out. It's playing at festivals and I eventually saw it, but, and it's a beautiful film. And so I've seen the animation I've seen animation used in different styles in documentary, and I was confident that it could be used, but there was something unique here that presented an opportunity for me. I, I feel like when animation is used, it's often, um, and this isn't criticism, but it's often this sort of like artistic decision by the invisible hand of the director. You know, it's like you see it, um, but you don't know how it's created. You don't know what interpretation has gone into it. And I think um, this, uh, this story presented a unique opportunity in the sense that we had this remarkably talented artist who was communicating through his art and you could see how his art was colored with his own feelings of longing and nostalgia for having missed his home you know and been separated from it you could see how the you know the, the sense of like the suffering from the torture and abuse that that, that how the that colored uh, his artwork as well. You know, that, that scene we have later in the film where he's running from his own paintbrush strokes, those are his paintbrushes, you know, with a calligraphy pen on the paper. And this is something that he was just communicating as he started this project, something he was just kind of getting out of his system. And our animation director, David St. Amant, found a way to sort of like scan these, you know, brush strokes and drape them onto 3D surfaces so we could have an animated version of Dashong sort of running from his own memories and, and brush strokes. And I just felt that that presented such a unique opportunity, the ability to look at not just to kind of pull the curtain back so that there's perhaps even more um, objectivity in the artistic process. And like you can see how um, art plays a role in facing like traumatic events and how art can help us to come to a new understanding and hopefully gain some type of catharsis through that process. And I just felt that that's a new dimension that I haven't seen in documentary. And I really wanted to try to explore that. Yeah. I have to admit that it did present really unique challenges because, you know, typically with a documentary, it's a very different process from animation. It's, you know, a typical documentary, you go out, you shoot hundred hours of footage, you sit in the editing suite and you start carving it up and the story sort of emerges organically from that process. And with an animation, what you're going to do is you're going to finish everything. You may have like a radio edit, essentially just the audio track of the film. Um, you know, it, it ready to go before, and you have, you know, storyboard for every scene and for every shot actually, right? And and you have that all planned out because the animation is Make very time it. consuming and expensive, yeah. So the, the whole idea of like having the animation process of the same film be part of the like live action documentary of the same film 
um, was a really kind of, it was exciting, but it was also like this giant leap of faith. It was kind of a crazy idea because these two processes are, are totally at odds. Um, and you know, it was nerve wracking. You're kind of like just hoping that it's all going to come together at some point because you're animating things and you're not sure how they're going to fit with other things that you're, you're still sort of figuring out. And that was necessary to let that process play out um, and, and to have it be authentic, to have Dashong's journey and, and his journey through his artwork be authentic and, and be able to share that with people. It was necessary to do it that way, but at the same time, uh, you know, it was nerve wracking. And of course, wow. in the end, hopefully, hopefully it was all worth it. <laughs> It is so emotional. I, I can't tell you the number of times I felt quite overwhelmed. Um, and by animation, it's amazing. I want to talk about one character, Big Truck. Mm. Um, he, he, he has superhero dimensions. You've given him superhero dimensions because that's what he was. He was ever hopeful. For, he had fortitude and strong belief in what he was doing, um, you know, and I just want to congratulate you for putting him in so, so perfectly and under, under a light, shining a light on him. Uh, what's the next step now? Yeah, well, you know, to say a little bit about Big Truck, and yes. this goes to Liang and some of the others as well, is... Uh, the way that, you know, hearing how you connected with him, and it, it reminds me of um, an experience we had when we were screening the film in the Netherlands. There was a woman sitting behind us who I learned was from the same city, from Changchun, and she had sort of heard about the screening from a friend of a friend thing. And she was sitting a row behind us and just a few seats over. And she was crying uncontrollably through the film. And, and I spoke with her after, and I learned that she knew the individuals in the film personally very well. And Dashong's ability to bring them to life, um, you know, through his drawings and credit as well to our animation team who collaborated to, to really bring them to life. She felt as though she had reconnected with the individuals that she knew. And, and that to me was just like, you can't think of a, of a more powerful um, comment, I think, when that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to be authentic to something. You're trying to bring to life a character that you know, his story obviously connected with me as well. And that's what you're trying to do as a director and a filmmaker is trying to allow an audience who doesn't have the opportunity to spend, you know, weeks and months with material and with, with someone's story, but like in a 90 minute experience to be able to sort of like gain that and connect with it. Right. So we, we really, as a team, really tried to convey that. And so seeing someone who knew them so personally connect with it in that way, was just such a, a meaningful a piece of feedback for us. Oh, well, that's yeah. wonderful. That just gives me goosebumps. Thank you so very much. And all of Canada will be rooting for you at the Oscars. Thank you so much. Uh, humbled by it, and we'll do our very best to represent. Thank you. It's so beautiful. Thank you. When I was drawing, I was actually a professional. 从业人员的时候，我并不难。但是当我在体会当时那种带我带回那种回忆的时候呢，我有一种很沉重的被压抑的感觉。